What's up everybody, this is Andrew with Programming Liftoff and today we're going to learn how to add a custom domain to a GitHub Pages website. So I've got a repository here that has GitHub Pages enabled. If I go to the settings and then scroll down, I can see that the site is published at this URL. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to replace this default URL with your own custom domain. Now, if you don't have a GitHub Pages site yet, I made a video to show you how you can create one. So click the link in the top right or click the link in the description of this video to get your site created. Then come back here to add a custom domain to your site. First, if you don't have a custom domain, you'll need to get one. To do that, you can visit a domain name registrar, which is a website that sells domains. The one I like to use is called Namecheap. I'll put my referral link in the description, maybe on the screen right now too. If you use that link, I get a small commission when you buy your domain. That helps support the channel and helps me create more tutorials for you guys, so I'd appreciate it a bunch if you use that link. Once you make it over to Namecheap, you can search for your domain. If you have a domain in mind, you can search for that one. If you don't know what domain you want yet, you can search for your full name to see if that's available. Or you can search for a nickname, your Twitter handle, or maybe your gamertag. For mine, I'm going to choose Programming Liftoff. And then you can also search for a specific TLD, which stands for top level domain. The most common TLD is .com, but another cool one is .dev. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a .dev domain. It looks like this one is available, so I will go ahead and buy it. And I'm going to skip ahead so you guys don't see me enter my credit card and other details when I purchase it. Once you purchase your domain, it should show up in your dashboard. We'll need to customize the domain name records for it. So to do that, click Manage and then click Advanced DNS. And then we'll need to add some domain name records here. So if you head on over to GitHub's documentation, I'll also paste these values in the description as well so you can find them. We'll need to create four A records with these IP addresses as the values. So I'm going to copy this first one. And then come down here and add a new record. It's going to be an A record. The host is going to be the at symbol. The at symbol represents your Apex domain, which is just a fancy term for your domain name. For example, my Apex domain is just programmingliftoff.dev. So we use the at symbol there, and then we can paste the IP address there. And then we can add another record. Use the at sign. And if you noticed, the numbers were just increasing. Uh, so the next one is 109 and then we can add another record paste it there and this one will be 110 and then add one more and this one will be 111 and then we can save all the changes All right, so now that we've created these records, make sure to delete the two default records that were here um, since we won't need these. And that's all we need to do here to set up our domain. One final thing we'll need to do is tell GitHub that we want to use our custom domain for our GitHub Pages site. So you can copy your domain and then go back to your GitHub Pages repository and go to the GitHub Pages section and paste that domain in the custom domain input box and click Save. And then one more thing I like to do is make sure that the enforced HTTPS box is checked. Sometimes it makes you wait a few minutes after adding a custom domain before you can check it. But in my case, it's already checked. So now your custom domain is all set up. If you visit your custom domain, it may or may not be working yet. So I'm going to visit mine and it looks like mine's working. Whenever you make changes to your domain name records, it can take around 30 minutes for those changes to take effect. Usually if it's not working after around 30 minutes, then that means something was set up incorrectly. And if your site isn't loading yet, I recommend opening up a new browser window every time you check it, rather than just refreshing the page, since the browser sometimes caches the previous response, so your site may not load in that browser window even after the domain name record changes take effect. So just check it in a new browser window every few minutes. And usually after around 5 to 10 minutes, your site should be loading. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Congratulations on setting up your custom domain. I'd love to see your website, even if it's really simple, so feel free to post your custom domain in the comments to share it. If you ran into any issues or have any questions, post those in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. That's all for this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.